Well, it's week three of the LCS with coverage brought to you by Alienware. It's day two here. I'm talking to a Blaze Olive after a very spicy game, an unfortunate loss to Evil Geniuses. Uh, but the draft was wild. I was just talking inspired a little bit about it. Um, and he was talking about how they were surprised by some of the stuff you guys were picking. And then it seems like they surprised you and some of their, their uh, <laughs> rebuttal picks. So uh, break down what inspired the draft from you guys. Um, well, we went into this week assuming Seraphine would be really broken. And we were trying to figure out counters into it. And we realized that the only counter we could find really was Yasuo. Yeah. And if you're not playing Yasuo into the Seraphine lane, it doesn't really work as a counter. So we tried sending Yasuo because then you at least have a like a farming support who's still going to be strong. So that worked out really well. And in all of our scrims, pretty much, the comp worked beautifully. Um, it was a bit awkward that they took away the Gragas because that didn't always happen. But we were still we had thought about that and we had the Zac pick into it. But we didn't really think about Kane. And from what you told me, they didn't really think about Kane until the very end of the draft. Yeah. So I was just talking about that versus the in the inspired interviews, the last final seconds. Uh, Vulcan picked it or suggested it. Yeah, and I think the Kane pick was really smart because it is very good against all of the. AP jungle picks that we want to pick with uh, the Yasuo Yone combination. So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess back to the drawing board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's back to the drawing board, but you also forced them to play something else. Like, there was, well, I think one of the co commentators, maybe Azale, was saying that, like, if you guys hadn't, if they had not, if it had been a team that was not as good as Evil Geniuses, they probably wouldn't have been able to rise to the challenge and play that stuff. And so maybe you guys would have won it. So I guess, like, uh, is this part of a more concerted effort from you guys to play or pick more unconventional stuff? Because we've seen a little bit in the past from Golden Guardians, but I don't know if you guys are really trying to, like, push the limit, I guess, in draft. Um, I would say that we're trying to be do what we think our players are most comfortable with. Yeah. So if our con our players feel confident on a pick or a strategy, then they are given the space to like really pursue that. And I think this was one of those opportunities where Seraphine's super OP on this patch, so people are going to leave it up on blue side and first pick it. And if you have a counter into it, you're usually going to have the practice advantage because they will have not played with it very often, yeah. especially against your specific set of champions. So in this case, um, I think it was, you know, good that we tried it. I mean, in one sense, it's bad that we did it against EG because they're going to be potentially the best team at countering it. But also, it is good because they'll also show us what we need to be more prepared for and think about what we need to do for our other strategies that we're coming up with. So, yeah. Well, I, uh, I have to ask you an uncomfortable question. I apologize. But uh, there's been a lot of speculation online that uh, Golden Guardians picked up uh, le leader, lighter. I always forget leader in the off season as a potential opportunity to have him play in the mid lane if uh, Ole gets a green card and can can play without taking up a, uh, an import slot. So, one, have you heard anything along this lines? Is this something that's been come to you? Do you feel like your job is on the line with him coming in? Like, how's uh, that all working out? I have not heard anything personally. Okay. Uh, as far as I know, job secure. But I think definitely in the back of my mind, I know that uh, Pride Stalker and Leader are good friends. Yeah. I'm sure I, I'm good enough friends with Pride Stalker that I think he's honest with me. And I don't think that there's any like, oh, if he plays bad, he's just going to get benched immediately. Yeah. Um, I think there's probably some connection to get him onto Golden Guardians. But I think that with the way that the team is performing right now, I'm, I feel like I'm fine in my spot. I think I'm performing solid. So. I'm not particularly worried, but it definitely motivates me more because I think I don't want people to think that I'm someone that can be replaced easily. Yeah. So, uh, do you uh, you mentioned having the conversation with Price Stalker, but what about like Anero or the GM? Like, have you had any conversation? Like, when they picked him up, did you ever go in there and be like, "Hey guys, kind of funny coincidence that you're drafting this guy or you're picking up this guy"? Uh, no, I did not really have that conversation. Uh, I I would be fascinated to know what they say, uh, just because I feel like so many people in the community are curious about it. So perhaps that'll be my next interview with Golden Guardians. Um, all right, so on to lighter topics. You're going into a bit of a vacation right now, or, or right Riot is going into a vacation. LCS has a week off. Are you guys taking any time off? Are you scrimming the whole time? Uh, I'm not actually sure. I th I would have to double check our schedule. I assume it'll be. A relatively normal week we might have an extra off day because there's no lcs games yeah. 
but I assume we're just going to be scrimming through it. That's my assumption. Are you happy to have the LCS break, or do you wish you were playing next week? Uh, I actually really like that there's a break. Okay. I think it's a nice change of pace, and I think that it will give teams more time to hone strategies and be very confident coming into the next patch. Although, the one thing I'm worried about is I'm not sure they're actually swapping to the next patch at the right time, unless there's also an extra week between the patch going to live, yeah. which might be the case, because Riot's going on break. Yeah. So I'm not super sure about that, but I think giving more time to prepare in the middle of the split is good, because you've given the teams some stage matches so they know what their weaknesses are on stage, yeah. and you give them a lot more time to actually fix those in the middle of the split, yeah. where usually you're so stressed about getting into playoffs that trying things isn't on the top of your priority list. You're just trying to you know, plug all the holes in the sinking ship. So I think it's a good change of pace. Very good. Well, hey, is there anything you want to say to any of the fans out there? Yeah, the Golden Guardians fans are the best fans in the world. And I'm so excited, everyone that is there supporting us in the LCS studio. I love you guys. And next time we face EG, it'll be a different result. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Well, thank you so much, Olive, for the interview. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of my coverage of all things LCS right here on my YouTube channel. It's so windy out here in Los Angeles, and I'm just blown away by the wind. And you'll be blown away by the deals you can get at Alienware if you check out Alienware.com slash Travis. They've got all sorts of fantastic stuff going on these days, so please check them out. Doing so by clicking the link. It's very important. If you click the link, this is a new thing that we're doing with them. Uh, it's actually very helpful to go to Alienware.com slash Travis. Uh, and if you do that, it helps because then they know that if you purchase something, it's because of me. And uh, I want all the credit because that's just who I am.